In this video, we're gonna be using Python to scrape images from my website, and specifically, we're going to be scraping all the 50 state flags of the United States of America from Wikipedia like this. Let's take a look at the website that we're gonna be scraping images from, and it's this Wikipedia article that's titled Lists of States and Territories of the United States. And down here, there is a table that has a row for each state in the US, uh, a link to the flag, which is what we want to download, and some other population information and land information, all that stuff that we're not gonna worry about. What we want to do is just loop over these flags with Python and download them to our computer. So we're gonna get pretty familiar with this website by the end of the tutorial. We'll come back here in a bit, but first let's get our Python set up. Uh, in the previous video, I set up the virtual environment and installed the beautiful soup package and the request package, which we can see here with pip list. We have beautiful soup version 4.11 and the request package. So you're gonna need those. And what we're gonna do is basically go to the Python shell, test out our commands, and as we, um, as we are satisfied with them, we can put them over here on the left to a Python script, which at the end of the video, we'll execute them and see the flags download onto our local computer. Okay, so let's get started. First couple things we're gonna do is import the requests library and the beautiful soup library. So from BS4, import beautiful soup. Okay, and like I said, we wanna keep track of those as we execute those commands. Now the URL is this URL that we were just on, so we're gonna make a URL variable here in Python for that. And then in the previous video, we talked about headers, so we want a header for our request, so we'll define that as well. So let's keep track of those over here. And now let's make our request to get the HTML content of the site. So we can do that, assign it to a variable called r and do requests.get URL equals the URL, headers equals headers. And we'll execute that. And now we have our request object with a 200 response, which is good. Okay, let's get a beautiful soup object for that request. So we'll do soup equals beautiful soup, and we'll pass it the content of our request. And then we'll use the HTML parser. Okay, so now we have our soup object, which we can now begin parsing it out. And in order to do that, we have to familiarize ourselves with the page. So let's go back to our website. We're gonna use the Chrome developer tools again, view developer, developer tools, because it has this really nice element inspector. And I already studied this page. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but there's, this, there's a couple tables on this page. So it would be hard to tell beautiful soup not impossible, but hard to tell them which table we're talking about since they're all defined in a similar way. Um, the best thing to do is to get this caption above the table, which is uh, right here, and then we'll get the parent of that caption, which is the table. So that's actually pretty easy to do because you can kind of crawl around the uh, HTML elements. Um, so let's do that with uh, our Python script. So we can do soup use our soup object and find the element called caption. And that does indeed return the caption that we want, states of the United States of America. So let's assign that to a variable called caption. And then we'll get the parent of that caption, which is the table. So we'll create a table variable that is caption.parent. So here is our table variable. Let's put those into our script. So we made our request we passed it into a beautiful soup object. We found the caption that we're interested in and we got the table associated with that. So let's go back to our page real quick and look at the table. So we have this table and inside the table you have the header and the body. In the body you have a whole bunch of table rows which correspond to each one of the states. So let's get all of these table rows. So we can do that with table.findAll table rows. It's that easy. So that, um, Let's assign that to rows, a variable called rows, and let's see how long that is. So how many rows are in this table? 52 rows. Now, there's only 50 states, but it's giving us 52 rows. The reason for that is because the table header, in this case, actually has two table rows in it. So we kind of want to ignore those, and we will. Uh, we just want the, not, not the zeroth row, not the first row. We want to start at the second row. So we'll take care of that in our script. 
So let's update this. Just one more line of code here. We have now a rows variable. And what we can do next is loop over those rows. So let's do a simple loop over all of those rows. So for each row in our rows, and like I said, we want to ignore the first two rows because they're not a state. So we can do that with Python um, subsetting starting at row two, which is not zero, not one, but two. So the third row and everything else after that. So for each row, whoops, colon for each row, well, for now, just print out the row. Okay, and that seems to work. So let's make a simple for loop over here for row in rows, starting at this, the third row, uh, we we're just printing out the row. Let's go back to our web page and see specifically what kind of information we want to pull out of here. And that is going to be the URL of that flag. So let's dive into here. So we have the table row, table header, let's expand that. We have a span element, so we'll expand that. And then we have an image element, which is a link to the flag, a thumbnail of that flag. So that's kind of pointing us in the right direction. So let's get that URL in Python. So we'll open up our script. And uh, over here, we will do row dot, and let's change this up so we can see what we're doing. So we're in the table row, we wanna in index into the table header, get the span, and then the image element and the attribute that we want is source. So row dot th dot span dot image, and the attribute that we want is source. So that, uh, because we're still in our for loop, uh, we still have access to the variable. The last one was Wyoming. So here is the link to the thumbnail for that flag for Wyoming. So that kind of does what we wanted to do. So let's update this in our script and call that source. So the source of the image is going to be this value right here. So now things get a little bit complicated because this, if you go to this in a web browser right now, it's probably not gonna work because um, we're starting out, first of all, we have two slashes in the beginning, so we got rid of those. And then we get this really tiny flag, which is just a thumbnail of the flag. So again, I was on here before, so I kind of know what I'm looking for. I realized that you can get rid of this thumb subdirectory and just access the flag directly. So we'll try that, uh, but that doesn't work. So we also have to strip off everything after this SVG part, and then we'll actually get that image that we were looking for, which is the flag for that state. So there's a couple things that we have to do in Python. We have to strip off these leading slashes. We have to strip off everything after SVG and we have to get rid of thumb. So we can actually do that fairly easily in Python if you're uh, familiar with Python. So let's do that one at a time. So for each row in the table, we want to get our source URL, which is what we were just looking at. And then from there, let's start parsing it out. So we can split it up into parts by splitting up the source uh, where it said .svg. So we want everything only before .svg because we want to strip everything off of the end of that. So we'll get that part of the URL only and for now, let's just print that out. So let's see what that looks like. So we get everything, including those double slashes, including the thumb up to the .svg, which we stripped off. So that looks good. Now let's take that a step further and do what we just had. And now what we wanna do is get rid of the thumb from our URL. So we can do that by saying, uh, we'll call it cleaned equals part dot replace we want to get rid of thumb slash and we want to replace it with nothing so let's see what that looks like and perfect that thumb uh, subdirectory in the URL went away so let's update our code over here with what we have done so far so I'll make a new line here so we got the first part of the URL and then we cleaned out, we got rid of that thumb. Next thing you wanna do is strip off these initial slashes. So 
Let's set up our for loop again. And the next thing we want to do is strip off those slashes. So we can do, we'll make a new variable called stripped equals cleaned dot strip and those two slashes from the beginning. So we'll try that and see what the stripped URL looks like now. Okay, that looks good. It looks really good. So the only thing we have left to do is to put an HTTPS prefix on there and put back the .svg extension. So we can do that by saying image equals, and we'll just make a string here that we're gonna format. So HTTPS colon slash slash, and then we'll take this and insert it into these curly brackets, .svg, close that, and we'll format it with the stripped URL. Um, of course, we have to do that in a loop, so we'll take that, update our script over here, and this is kind of what we have so far. So let's test that out and print out the image now. All right, that looks good. We have a URL, proper URL. Let's just test one of these. We'll pick out Vermont, go to our web browser, load this up, and we do indeed get the Vermont flag. So we're doing really good here. All right, um, now in order to save a file, you have to give it a file name and to keep things consistent, let's get this, let's parse this out of our URL so we can save the file to our computer with this name right here. So let's make a file name. Uh, let's go through here again. Let's set up our for loop. And what we wanna do is create a file name variable and all we're really gonna do is take our image variable and split it every time you see there's a, a slash, we'll split it into a list. And the only thing that we care about is everything that comes after that last slash. And Python indexing makes it really easy to access that the last element in a list. So we can do image.split anytime we see a slash. And what we want is that last element, which we can index into with negative one. So let's see if we actually get that file name as expected. And we do, so these are all file names of the flags that we're gonna save onto our local computer. Okay, let's update our code with that last file name line that we just created. And now we are ready to actually make a request to get that image, okay? So we're gonna do that with the requests library again. So we'll set up our loop here and the next line in the loop is going to be getting the actual data for the flag. So the flag, we're gonna access the requests library dot get, and we're gonna get the image at the URL here, so the image, and we're gonna use the same headers that we have already defined up above. So headers equals headers. Oh, and we also have to put an equal sign here to assign that to the flag variable. So let's check to see if the status code when we execute this loop is good. So we can do that by looking at the flag.status underscore code because we can't really print out a picture to the console. We'll just make sure that we actually get the data associated with the flag. So let's run that. And it takes a little bit longer because it's actually downloading data. And as long as we see a status code of 200, that means we got the proper flag data. So let's update our code to include the flag request. And I'm gonna write some code over here now. So basically we wanna just check to see if the flag status code is, if it's not equal to 200, then we know we have an error, something went wrong. So we can print out something like error getting this flag, okay? Otherwise, we can download that data into a file on our computer, and we'll do that with the following. So with open, at this point, an empty file with the name of the file name variable that we defined up here, and that file will give it the attributes of wb for right binary, and we'll say as f, so it's gonna be, uh, this is the variable name for this file that we're gonna access within this with statement. And then just so you don't see anything print out to the console, we'll do an, assign this to a no op variable, which just means like we're gonna execute this code, but we don't really do anything with the variable. Anyway, we'll do f.write flag.content. So basically we're making a new file 
with the name that we assigned to the file name variable. And we have a temporary name for that called f. And we're going to write to that file with the data that we got from the flag via the requests library. OK, and when we do that, we'll just so we know what's going on on the console, we'll say saved that file. So format file name. OK, and that should actually do it unless we made a mistake. But we'll see very soon. Let's go ahead and execute this entire for loop to see if we get all those flags downloaded onto our desktop, which I am on my desktop. So we should see that happen in the background here. So let's paste that for loop in and let her rip. That oh, file name's not defined. So I spelled something wrong. This one right here. Let's try that again. Whew. All right, way to ruin the moment, Tony. Let's do that one more time. And there we go. We're saving all those flags. You can see them happening in real time. It's fairly quick. Files are not that big. And we got all the flags on our desktop. How many flags are there? There should be 50 of them. And I think it says it somewhere. Yep, right by my mouse it says 50 flags. That was a fun video. I hope you guys liked it too. If you did, let me know in the comments below. I'm thinking about doing more coding, programming, Python videos like this. So let me know what you think and watch some other Python videos if you're interested over here.